Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining in this discussion today. I am Famira Racy with the uh, Public Knowledge Project Communications Specialist. And this discussion today is about the Publication Facts Label. The Publication Facts Label is part of the Journal Integrity Initiative, which aims to provide a way for the public and professionals to assess the degree to which journals and articles adhere to scholarly publishing standards through verification and to communicate that verification to the public. So to understand more about this Journal Integrity Initiative and the Publications Facts label and how that could influence professions like journalism, I'm here today with Laura Moorhead, Assistant Professor at San Francisco State University's Journalism Department. She's been involved in the project for about a year now, and she's going to talk to us a little bit more today about her perspective and her role in the project. She works to improve the professional and educational practices in the areas of access to research and health information, as well as media and information literacy. So thank you so much, Laura, for taking the time to talk with me today about this initiative. Thank and you. Thank you. And first, you you have a keen interest in improving media and information literacy, and as I mentioned, access to research and health information. Would you like to share a little bit more about that? Yeah, so prior to um, going into higher ed as a professor, I worked for about 20, 25 years as a journalist. So my background was in covering science, covering health, uh, I was 12 years at Wired Magazine and then some time at PBS Frontline World. And so I kind of come to this from both the academic perspective and then the journalism profession in the sense that journalists often try and get access to public knowledge in the form of research articles. And that can be a struggle. And they're part of the public and yet they also act as a gatekeeper to the public. And so my interest kind of stems from that and helping that group get access as a way to kind of um, open up the access to other members of the public. That's great. So it's not necessarily about checking. It's not necessarily about this tool being a, a tool for checking the, the, the validity and the rigor of the research itself. It's more uh, as a tool to help people in the professions and people doing research uh, to assess whether those journals and articles are adhering to that set of scholarly standards. I think it's all intertwined in the sense of you first you need access, but then you need to to somehow judge what you're you're accessing, what you're looking at. And I think with um, you know so much being available online, there is the question of, what is accurate? What's incorrect? What's misinformation? How do you how do you gauge what you're looking at? And that's where I think um, this project, and in particular the the label, comes into play. You know, there's certainly concern over predatory journals, um, and also just um, I think people in general need help making sense of some of the information, particularly research that's out there. And it comes very timely as we're moving into more uh, open access and global reach and more uh, diversity of people making making use of that information. So um, your passion seemed to fit really well with the with the initiative and your background and what you've described so far. Could you tell us a little more about what's your role in this project? Yeah, so um, I'm working on the research aspect of bringing in the journalists, both professional journalists and then uh, student journalists to get a sense of how they might use the publications facts label and then also what suggestions they might have for us. Okay, that is great. And there are some qualitative interviews you're gonna be interviewing. Could you say a little bit more about that interview process and what you hope to uh, reach out of that process? Yeah, it'll be a mix of journalists and students from um, a variety of backgrounds um, in terms of the professional journalists, a variety of publications. 
And then really having them walk through how they would use it and, um, you know, on one level, just trying it out. Um, there'll be a setup where part of the interview, aside from some, you know, basic communication use questions, will also be, um, let's walk through this example of a journal article. Let's go to the website. Let's see how um, how it strikes you from um, an ease of use, from what makes sense, and also what what they might wish that publication's label had. So the public is participating in the research. They're informing the research. Is that is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's nice um, to have both the professional journalists, which again, they're they are part of the public, but they're also seen as gatekeepers, but then also the journalism students. Great. So one aspect of the project is to open up these conversations and hopefully influence industry standards um, and professions. So how might this project do that from your perspective as a journalist? Well, I think, um, and this is this is probably down the road a ways, but within journalism, there are style guides, there's organizations that the journalists look to. Um, Associated Press in the United States, as well as Society of Professional Journalists, but there are other organizations. But they do, um, you know, particularly in their style guides, they do kind of call out how how do you cite research, how do you handle preprints, and I do think there's the potential to show those organizations some of the value of having something like the publications X label, where it actually can help journalists not only cite or explain what they're sharing with the public, but also how to judge what they're they're accessing. Fantastic. So. Once the 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 members of the project have tested this publication facts label out in a variety of of kind of domains, um, um, journalists included, students, there's a there's there's a an array of of sampling that will be done. Then that will kind of help build the case for the usefulness of this tool and that that can be brought to organizations uh, for a proposal in hopes of influencing the industry standards. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. So, and I do think there's the industry standard, but certainly, um, you know, part of the qualitative research with journalism students, I do think educational realms are also another big um, space where something like this could be really valuable. Um, You know, when I teach journalism students, there's always that segment on how do you access research? How do you judge research? What's the difference between a preprint and a peer reviewed journal article? And certainly something like the publications facts label would be incredibly helpful to just help them even outside the setting of academia to make sense of of what they're looking at and what they're potentially gonna source. Right. So even though there's the two main objectives of the project, um, helping with the uh, um, making sense of scholarly publishing standards and are they being conformed to as well as influencing those standards, it's very multi-layered because I know that part of this project was tested in the past so far with high school students. And there were a lot of high school students saying, you know, I didn't realize that this was involved in the process. I never thought about these criteria. It was difficult to try to find all of this information in the places where it exists without a tool like this and that the tool uh, brought all that information together in a way that helped them make better sense of it and to learn more about being uh, critical in their own um, investigations and explorations and assessments. That is wonderful. So do you think the publication facts label shows promise of catching on then? It does. I mean, partly one thing I've seen just with some of the initial interviews that we've done is just there's such a need for um, and desire to have help to make sense of some of this. Um, And so I feel as though the the interest is there and then it's just showing um, I think publishers, the value of it. And then also there's the logistics of, uh, you know, the, you know, publishing is 
you know, it's, it's a massive realm and there's a lot of different individuals or groups. And so um, I think the logistics and ease of use are going to be crucial, but I, I feel as though there's, a, there's an interest and a need for this. Um, and one of the things I particularly appreciate with the publications facts label and watching how students use it, a lot of those little items are nudges for them to be thinking about what am I looking at and how do I make sense of it? You know, intellectually, people get that when there's funding for research, that that could potentially be problematic, but that's not something people necessarily actively think of. I'm going to look at this research article and then to immediately say, well, I wonder who funded it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think by just putting some of those elements on that top level, it's just a nudge and a reminder to people to really think about what they're reading in a, in a critical fashion. That's fantastic. And in, you know, in some programs, they, except for maybe publishing and journalism and these types of, these types of disciplines and programs, uh, people, people, students may not be learning a lot about these types of influences, like um, the bias that can be created and, and, and the barriers that can be put up um, through just uh, funding sources and things like that. So, Yes, I think that uh, I would I would like to agree that, well, I'd like to hope that there's definitely some promise for this publication's facts label. It's it's very reminiscent of things like the nutrition facts label, which which has helped quite a bit um, the public to make progress in their decisions. And so, yes, thank you so much for spending this time with me, Laura, and for clarifying what is the Journal Integrity Initiative, the publication facts label aspect of that. And the audiences can learn more about the entire initiative and the background and what drives that by looking further into the uh, news blog post on PKP's blog, in which this video will be embedded in. Thank you very much, Laura. Thank you.